All right, let us say hello to South Dakota zone. Logan Storley gets back in the cage and gets to do so at home in South Dakota this Friday at Bellator 265. He's going to take on Dante Shiro. Logan, good to see you, man. How are you? Yeah, thanks for having me on. Absolutely. It's great to speak with you again. When was the last time you fought in South Dakota? Was it that uh, that LFA presents card before you signed with Bellator or have you fought there since then? Yeah, Bellator came back here three years ago. That's right. That's right. So yeah, it wasn't so that I long fought. after that then. Yep. Yeah, I got the, it was the Dana White looking for a fight and then I fought here again with another LFA card and then uh, Bellator. So it's been a little while, but you know, I fought at home plenty of times in the Sanford Pentagon and I'm excited to do it again. Yeah. I mean, this is good stuff. If I told you like a year ago that you'd be fighting in South Dakota again, would you believe me? I mean, at, a, at that point we didn't know what was going on. So, um, <laughs> it was, it's exciting to be back. It's exciting that things are, you know, going smoothly again and that, you know, we're getting to have fans and perform in front of, uh, people that support us. Do you have a lot of people coming out, friends, family, are you selling this place out almost single-handedly on Friday? Yeah. There'll be a lot of people from, uh, the area. Sioux Falls is kind of my second home here in, in, um, South Dakota. I spent a lot of time. My agents from here, sponsors are from here. Um, a lot of, a lot of high school friends and college friends that live here. So I'm excited. And then my hometown's only two hours away. And a lot of the wrestling community, you know, that followed my high school career and college career, uh, is all, all around the area. So it'll be, uh, it'll be a good night. And here we are, your, your eighth Bellator appearance coming up. You're going to do so at home and you're doing so in somewhat unfamiliar territory you're coming in off of a loss to the now welterweight champion Yaroslav Amosov. And it was a very close fight. You lost via split decision. I'm sure it sucks to, to lose when you're so used to winning, man. But to look back upon that fight, what comes to your mind like immediately? Um, I think it comes down to just a uh, little small transitions, you know, it was two or three small transitions that if I secure the takedown, it's pretty easy for those judges to maybe call that round, you know, and that's really what it comes down to. Um, you know, besides that, I, you know, he had me in danger in the second and he had a, the choke in, and then I had him in the third and, you know, knocked his mouthpiece out went forward. Um, but what really comes down to it is that what he did to Lima watching that fight, you know, um, how he dominated Lima and, so, you know, I've said this before, you know, over and over again, I've trained with the best in the world with, from Usman when he was with us to Gilbert Burns, Robbie Lawler, Mike Chandler, Jason Jackson, um, Vicente Luque, you know, I've trained with all these guys. So it's the best of the best at Sanford. And those are the guys that, you know, you're, you're confident when you walk in there because you've been tested over and over again. And, uh, you know, with the Amasov fight, it was, uh, I, I got to find it, you know, part of me there. And I think he did too. Cause it was, uh, it was, <laughs> it was a long, long fight with a lot of grappling. And then you, you know, we had to figure out a way to keep pushing and win those small positions. And so, you know, like you said, it came down to one judge and that's the way things go. You know, I can't sit here and complain. Um, it's on to the next and Friday night I have to take care of business before I, you know, talk about that again. So you, 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 you took some silver linings at least out of that. So, I mean, it, it, it's an L on the record, but only you just needed one judge to say, otherwise you take, it seems to me that you take a lot of positives from that fight regardless. Is that sort of the way you're viewing this right now? Yeah. You know, I was disappointed with my inability to finish some of those singles. Um, I was happy with my ability to push forward and, and to, you know, watch, sit, see him sit there. Um, at the end of the second end, end of the third. And, you know, when we talked of, you know, how close the fight was. And so I pushed him to his absolute limits and then to see what he's done to everyone else, you know? Um, so I, I know that I can beat him. Um, but you know, he had a better night and then he goes and wins the title. So I, I respect the hell out of him. You know, he was nothing, but, you know, there was nothing but respect that whole week and after the fight. Um, but in my mind, I know that, you know, I've been in there. I know how close it was. I know what I have to fix. Um, so that's that, but I'm not worried about that right now. I'm not, I'm not focused on Amasov, you know, I'm, I'm focused on Dante Shiro on Friday night. Was, I, I, it's kind of a weird question, but was there like a, was there a small part of you that was hoping Amasov would win the title because it only makes that performance you had stick out a little bit more in a positive way. Do you know what I mean by that? 
Yeah, of course. You know, like you want the guy that your one loss to be, uh, what is it? He's 26 and 0 now. Um, and beat Lima 50, 45 across the board. I think it was maybe one judge was 49, 46. Um, but yeah, you know, that fight really wasn't that close. Um, and I, everyone knows how good Lima is, you know, when he, when he opens up, I mean, he is so dangerous. Um, so to watch Amosov just really dominate those positions and, um, you know, get him tired was, was, you know, interesting. And, you know, I, my one loss is to a guy that's 26 and all, who's the champ. And, um, I guess it is what it is, you know? Um, so that's, yeah, it was, it was fun for me to, to watch and compare, you know, the, the styles and, and how he won that fight. And, and, you know, I wanted to see if Lima presented problems that, you know, maybe I didn't. Well, that was then I'm sure you'd love to run that one back down the road, but it is on to Friday night. It's on to Dante Shiro, who is eight and two. He's fought for LFA. He's fought for one. And he's got a couple finishes back to back heading into this one. Do you know much about him? Were you familiar with him at all? I wasn't before, um, but I've watched his, I've watched his film. Um, He's tough. He's gritty, you know, and he uh, he's been in some tough fights where he just keeps grinding. You know, he's not going to, He's not going to go out there and, and just, you know, lay over and be done, you know, with one shot. And, um, so I, I know that, you know, he, in his head, he, he thinks he's going to win this fight just like I do. Um, and he, and he's a competitor. So, um, really what it comes down to is just me implementing my game plan, getting to my positions, dominating what, um, you know, I've been working on for years and years and years and just, you know, I, really for me, it's to have my best performance of my life. You know, that's kind of what, um, th- that's the kind of performance you want coming off a loss, um, is to go out there and show everyone, you know, how dominant you are in this division. It's, I, I enjoy speaking with you, Logan, because I- I've kind of seen you grow up in the sport a little bit. Like I remember after one of you wins at Mohegan, you spoke to the media afterwards and you had this giant chip on your shoulder. I mean, you were on fire, you were spitting venom. And now I look at this man sitting in front of me who has just, you, you just, not that you don't have a chip cause I'm sure it's in there somewhere, but I feel like you've matured quite a bit. Like I'm, I'm looking at a much different guy right now. Do you, am I, am I crazy to think that am, am I onto something here? Cause you seem, I don't know. It seems like there's a chip there, but it's not as visible as it was before. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was just, you know, I had two back-to-back fights where, you know, I wrestled a lot in those fights and people are booing people, you know, sending you stuff. I hope you get cut. You're the worst, you know, like, and so it was just kind of me, you know, I was upset with the fact that you're trying to please everyone. You know, you come from the sport of wrestling where it doesn't matter how you get it done. You won. And then you come to this sport and you dominate a, you know, guy that now is in the UFC and then Pascu, who was tough and has fought everyone and, and you dominate him 30, 26 across the board and everyone's hating on you and booing. And it was just like, I I don't know like what I did wrong. And it's like, you know, pretty much screw you guys. Like, I, I don't know what else you want now. It's, I don't know. It was, you just kind of grow up. It's, it, you know, this is what I do for, for a living. It's not who I am, you know, kind of, kind of deal. And yeah, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to fight, you know, to the best of my ability. And I'm, I'm very, very prepared and I'm excited. Um, uh, but I, I just don't really care anymore if, you know, what people have to say and, you know, and, and if they, you know, h- hate your performance, um, I get it's entertainment. I do. And I want to, I want to make sure those people that spend their hard earned money, you know, get, a uh, a fun, entertaining performance. But at the same time, this is my job and I have to, I have to go out there and get a W, you know? And, um, so some of those fights, it was wrestling and and dominating and, you know, controlling. And, um, so I don't know, it's just, it's a, it's a tough situation, you know, for some of those, because I get it without those fans, there is, there's no Bellator, there's no UFC, there's, we don't have jobs. And, um, but at the same time, it's like, we have to win. You have to continue to win in this sport. That's gotta be such a freeing feeling for you though, right? Like just letting all that go and just kind of focusing on what you need to do, focusing on your performances and just knowing that you did everything you could to leave everything out there. That's good enough for you. You don't need to necessarily worry about what other people think. Like it's gotta be such just a much better feeling than it was, you know, coming out of a fight three three or so years ago. Right. Yeah. You know, and I think people, you know, I've seen my performances and, and with the Amosov fight and fighting, you know, some of the best guys, um, they, they know I'm legit and, you know, my skills have increased. And and I think that's kind of where it comes from too, is just, um, 
you know, fight week isn't so much pressure now. And so, uh, I don't know, just everything's kind of slowed down a little bit, you know, and spending time with Robbie and, uh, Chandler, you know, you know, especially Robbie during fight week is he's the most relaxed human on earth. And then he goes out there and he's ruthless Robbie Lawler. And, you know, so I, I've learned a lot from him over the years and, um, just, you know, going out there and, and being you. And so that's, that's really all I can do at the end of the day. How's he doing? Getting ready to get back in there in a month, in about, about a month's time from right now. How's he hey. doing? Uh, I know you've been working with him, obviously. Yeah, he's good, man. He's excited. And it's a huge fight and two veterans who have really paved the way for this sport. And I mean, that's uh, Robbie's been fighting for 20 years, you know, that and Diaz has been fighting for, you know, 18, that's probably right around the same, you know? Um, so you know, that's a guy you can learn from well-respected in the game, you know, an absolute great human outside of the cage, um, that lives his life the right way. Um, and same with Chandler, you know, so you can learn a lot from guys like that. And that's kind of, you know, where, where I take a lot of, you know, Gilbert Burns, another one I spent a lot of time with, it's just good human beings besides fighting, you know? And so that's, that's really where, you know, I guess kind of learn to be a little more relaxed during this and enjoy the process you know, start to really enjoy it because when it's over, it's over. Will Gil- Gilbert be in South Dakota? Is he coming to the fight? I know he's a, uh, he, he's a big family guy, big, big relationship guy with the team wants to go out there and travel the world to support his team. Will he be out there? I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure. He was just traveling out and uh, he was in Dallas, I think doing some BJJ clinic. So I'm not sure if he'll be here or not, but um, you know, I, I, uh, it was exciting to see him get his win and he helped me a lot this camp as well. So, um, you know, much respect to all the guys at Sanford and all my coaches who helped me get ready and, you know, be sitting here, um, ready to go on Friday night. So how do we send the South Dakota faithful home happy on Friday, Logan? How do we get this thing done? How do we get your hand raised? How do we, uh, how do we bounce back? Uh, just going in there and really pushing the pace, you know, letting my hands go my last fight, you know, really when I couldn't get to my takedown when, you know, for the first time in the fight, you know, I had to start letting my hands go and, you know, landed some good shots and, and never really got clipped with anything. You know, it was just, I learned a lot. You, you, you dug deep when you were tired, when we were both tired, let your hands go, um, get more comfortable in there. And, uh, I, you know, that's what I'm, I'm really comfortable, I guess, with too, is just, 15 minutes of constant action that fight there was never really a dull moment and i had to try new things you know and and go to different waters than i've ever been before and so um for me at this one it's just it's pushing the pace it's using your hands and your um your takedowns together you know you know i can i you know i've had knockouts in the lfa before so i know when i touch a guy i can hurt him um bellator you know a lot of them I've been able to get to my takedown right away and do my damage on top. Um, so this fight is, um, you know, we've definitely worked on continuing to improve all my skills, but my hands have gotten a lot better, a lot more comfortable. And I think, uh, putting it all together this time is really what, you know, how I get it done. So right now you're number five in the rankings at 170. Press a performance on Friday. If all goes the way you say it will. Where do we go from here? Like, we're not overlooking Dante, of course. Of course, all eyes are focused on Friday, but in the back of your mind, where does a win take you? Like, what sort of fights will you be seeking? How close do you think you'll be to getting that rematch with Yaroslav? Um, yeah, well, Lima and uh, Lima and MVP are fighting in October, right? And then, so you got Jason Jackson, who's a good teammate of mine. And then you got Neiman, who's coming off a loss with... Uh, with Jason, uh, and then you have Amosov. So I don't, I don't know, um, exactly how it looks, you know, where, where it all kind of, how it makes sense really, you know, I guess we're gonna have to wait and see kind of if Lima wins, does he get an immediate rematch after getting beat 50, 45, you know, by Amosov? I don't know. Um, does Jason, J- you know, so th- those are the questions I think a lot of us have all in the top five, you know, right. obviously if MVP wins, he'll get the title shot, you know? Um, but we don't want to wait and I don't know how long MVP will want to wait after that fight, you know? So for me, it's, I'm looking at the top five. I, I, I want that rematch. I want to fight for the title. You know, that's why I got in this game was to be the best in the world. 
And, you know, I had it slip kind of out of my fingertips. The last, uh, you know, potential to go fight for that title. We both knew me and Yaroslav knew that winner of that fight was probably fighting for the title. And so, um, to have, have it be that close, you know, split decision and then, uh, watch him go dominate, you know, definitely motivates you to, um, go have your best performance this Friday and put your name right back in the hat. And, uh, I guess kind of see what the matchmakers at Bellator do. Well said, Logan. Excited to see you back there on Friday. Bellator 265 live on Showtime, main card fight. Thank you for the time, man, especially so close to the fight. Enjoy fight week back home and uh, looking forward to seeing you on Friday, my man. Thank you. I appreciate it.